Okay, with a moderate bit of uh, fiddling, we got it free. And another thing I'll mention is uh, be careful when you do this because these little plastic controls here, they can snap quite easily. This one does just drop out, that's okay, no drama there. But uh, don't break these because otherwise you, you know, you're going to have a lot of trouble. Um, I don't think they're going to glue very well, but, you know. So, here we are, and this one definitely has no belt, and it actually is, ugh, look at that, it's goo. So this is exactly the problem that I had with the other one, and it was an awful, awful mess getting it out, and it goes everywhere. So, be warned. Um, one thing that I use to clean up myself sometimes is eucalyptus oil or you can use, you know, a bit of acetone or whatever you've got hanging around. So the thing I want to try next is just to see whether we can get any life out of this motor, whether we see it spin or doing anything. So maybe we can just stick a battery in there and press play. And nothing. I'm not sure whether these need a tape inside. Let's pause and I'll put one in. Okay, what I found is you don't actually need a tape in there. Uh, what I did is I just gave that a bit of a, a nudge with my finger and it is now spinning. So something sort of, well obviously the belt in there has uh, gone kaput and maybe that sort of made it stick a bit. Um, I don't know how well that motor is going to hold up but at least we know that it works and you know we're getting getting power there so it means that maybe we've got something that we can work with here um, and actually looking at this perhaps no one's actually been too far into it they probably maybe had a look at it and got scared off. Uh, one of the things that I'm hoping for is that actually that someone had a look at this, saw that need desoldering, and ran away. And actually, I think I might be onto something there, because they it all looks kind of factory to me. I would need to maybe check that. I don't think that spring was supposed to be there. Hmm. Well, there you go. That's something odd. That would... Uh, that would short something out, so... Okay, we're into it now. Uh, what I found, actually, is that uh, when I pressed play, this motor didn't work, or it didn't run. And then I just gave it a bit of a flick with my finger, and suddenly off it went. Um, let's have a look at that now. There you go, it's spinning. I don't know if you can see that, but trust me, it is spinning. So that's something. Um, one thing I did find is that... Uh, under this and stuck, there's a bit of, they've got some sort of sticky stuff here that uh, they put over the, to cover some things and I think to hold this down a bit. There was actually a small spring where there should not be a small spring. So can you see that? Don't know. But anyway, um, and it was just sort of randomly in there. It looks rather like the return spring on that mechanism for the for, you know to retain that door shut so it looks the same size more or less um, however we already have one of those so is that a manufacturing mistake um, somehow got in there where it shouldn't be uh, is it from somewhere else if it's from somewhere else then we've got a problem because I don't know where it goes um, so that was interesting um, Luckily, it was mostly over this section here, which is, you know, isolated from everything else, but it was kind of like touching, so it, there's a possibility that it could have shorted something. It could have actually also done some random shorting. Um, and, yeah, it, it doesn't belong anywhere from, from anywhere I've been, and it was definitely stuck there. Like, it, it took uh, a bit of force to get it off. Now, the other thing to mention that's notable here, these wires all look to be... Uh, factory, so I don't think anyone's actually been in here before. 
Um, my suspicion is someone's decided, oh, it needs a new belt, have a look at it and gone, no, nah, it's too much work. And in a way, they're actually right. They're, they're, they're quite a lot of work to get a belt in there. You've got a few screws here that need to come undone. I think there's four screws or something. Um, plus, you need to desolder these. I think these main wires here, uh, I think there's five that need a desoldering. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, these ones were, I think, long enough that it didn't need to bother. Can't remember if that's true or not. Um, the yellow ones you don't need to worry about. The red one, I think, no, I think I did that too. Um, the blue one, no, it was long enough. You just take it off this stuff here and suddenly you get enough room. So I think maybe I, on the other one, I did desolder, well, it might have been seven wires now, however many. Anyway, so that's unfortunately what you've got to do to, to get into just to change the belt. Um, because these things don't seem to come off as one part, which would have been nice and convenient. So my next step now is I'm actually going to take this over, um, remove the batteries obviously, uh, take this over, run it on to the scanner on high res, see if I can't get some kind of a, an image off it that uh, you know can help me, whether it can focus that far behind and all that sort of stuff, I don't know. Um, If that doesn't work, then it'll be, you know, I'll take some macro photos or something like that, just to get a good idea of what's actually there before anything gets either damaged or lost or forgotten. Um, with so many wires going everywhere and so many of the connections, you know, you, you can see there's very small distance between parts, you know, maybe one, two millimeters on, on some of them, and, and sometimes the gaps are very small. It can be very easy to uh, put something in the wrong spot. 